Hello, I'm Tom Long. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are a regular, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the tools that we have to cope with some of life's more significant challenges. When I think about myself, my family, uh, my friends and their families, there are just so many examples of the kinds of challenges that I'm thinking about, uh, ranging from cancer to toxic relationships to dysfunctional families to addiction. And, you, you know, the list just, it goes on and on. There have been charlatans and those duped by their lies who thought that if you were a good and righteous person, everything in your life would be hunky-dory. Early in my walk with Jesus, I was taught that if I didn't walk around with a big smile and act happy, I was being a bad witness for Jesus. But pretending doesn't make it so. And no matter how good you might be, Jesus said that God causes his sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. As Henry Wadsworth Longfellow said in his poem, Rainy Day, into each life some rain must fall. As an, abst as an abstract reflection, into each life some rain must fall is all well and good, but I'm reminded of a story my grandmother told. She had surgery uh, for a, a kind of cancer and was in pain afterwards. My Papa at one point lost patience and chided her to quit being such a baby about it. <laughs> but in a twist of fate, a few years later, he was diagnosed with the same cancer and had the same procedure. When he was hurting and complaining, grandmother asked, what, if, what about your advice to me to toughen up when this happened to me? His reply, according to her, was, yeah, but that was you and this is me. <laughs> Now we can be philosophical about the trials of others, even wax poetic, but when it happens to us, when stuff gets real, we want to know, how does God expect me to get through this? As the darkness closes in, or as the song playing in the background says, when the power of darkness comes in like a flood, it can seem like we're being challenged by a nine foot nine giant wearing 125 pounds of armor and menacing us with a javelin that has a 1,500 pound tip. In our weakness, we may face dark times in our lives that would leave battle-hardened leaders and their men dismayed and terrified. But even now, as a senior citizen, I'm inspired by the story of a man so young that he was little more than a boy. But this young man was a man Paul described as a man after God's own heart. He was the one telling his country's warriors, let no one lose heart. Or, as the lyrics to our background music say, when the enemy presses in hard, do not fear. When the enemy's giant, Goliath, came out to mock and challenge the Israelites, we're told that the shepherd boy man gathered five smooth stones and rose to the challenge. When Goliath, the very picture of overwhelming darkness, moved closer and threatened to kill David, David responded with words that would give even Shakespeare and Henry V, give, give Shakespeare himself goose pimples. David said, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. 
What the powers of darkness seem not to understand is that death has been defeated by the resurrected Christ. Although many have been beaten, tortured, and died in our struggles against darkness, that is never the end of the story for a person of faith. For us, death holds no power. We will be raised to continue the eternal life we have even now through our relationship to Christ. But are you curious about the five smooth stones of David? He used one of them to notoriously slay the seemingly undefeatable giant. But what stones do we have in our sling to face the rain, the darkness that falls on us today? Whatever that darkness may be. In Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 17, Paul tells us to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, to put on not worldly armor, but the full armor of God. Then he lifts the curtain for us to see behind the visible adversary to the spiritual adversary, the rulers, authorities, and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So what does Paul say is the full armor of God? Not the modern day equivalent of sword and spear and javelin, but the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Truth, righteousness, the good news of peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God. But I resonate best with what Paul said in Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And whatever ordeal you're going through at the time you watch this, may God lift you up as on eagle's wings. May God make your stand firm for justice when there's so much injustice in the world. May his love overflow through you to others in acts of mercy. May God give you an unwavering faithfulness together with your fellow believers, bringing so much light into your situation, into our shared struggles, that evil itself will ultimately be overcome. Amen. When the enemy presses in hard, do not fear, the battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near, the battle belongs.